Hey y'all, it's me, Kimberly Clark, and welcome to my 11th anti-haul video, aka, what I'm not gonna buy. What I'm not gonna... If you are new to my channel, welcome. Please check out all of my other videos, not just my anti-haul videos. If you think that smart consumerism, deconstructing some of the crazy marketing hype that is infiltrating our society and taking over the frickin' world is the wave of the future, then please, please check out my Listen Up series. I have a video specifically dedicated to consumerism and how it potentially negatively affects us and the world and society and everything, please check that out. And if you want more like practical, real kind of makeup advice and discussions, 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 please check out my What Happened to Your Face series. That's a series where I wear a makeup look all night and then come home and tell you what happened to it. Like, legit. Real. The realness. But I know why you're here right now. You are here to hear me talk some shit about makeup. And I'm happy to oblige. For this anti-haul video, I've decided to actually talk about products that I've actually tried. I guess one could consider this a makeup products I didn't like video. But I'm the queen of stop shopping, and I can call this video whatever the hell I want, so I'm calling it an anti-haul because I either threw away, returned, or gave away all of these products they're so shitty, and what's exciting about this one is I could link you to other videos in which I've actually used these products, and you could actually see how shitty they are. Yay! Let's jump into this, my 11th anti-haul video. <gasps> the first product that I bought and would never ever freaking buy again is this. This is the Kat Von D Locket Concealer Creme in the shade White Out, a pure white concealer. When I first heard of this concealer, I was like, I would love to try that, that seems amazing. And then I finally got it, and, um, this sucked. I am a drag queen, if you didn't know. I love full coverage, crazy white, bright highlight. Basically like clown white for my highlight. I've recently been using the Krylon TV Paint Stick, which is like a drag staple. But when Kat Von D came out with this, I was like, oh my god, I want to try it. I love Kat Von D. I, she makes my favorite eyeshadows. I think she's great. I've never really tried any of her face products. Let me try this and see what, it, what it's like. And when I first tried it, I admit I was like very impressed with how quickly I could actually just like swipe on my white highlights, got the little wand. But as I would work with it, I realized, like, it just blended away to nothing. Now, I can understand and appreciate why one would want a light, like, serum-type concealer that would, like, kind of blend away and look very natural and kind of fade into your, you know, natural skin tone and just, like, kind of disappear and be beautiful and flawless. Not with a white concealer. If you are rocking a freaking white concealer, you are using it to be, like, boom, boom, white. Headlights, cheekbones, headlights, highlight, boom, bam, bop. Bop it, twist it, pull it, shake it, jam it. What, how do you remember bop it? Remember bop it? Anyway, at least that's what I'm looking for in a white concealer is not to like lighten my foundation or lighten other concealers. No, to be freaking white, to be what it says it is, a white concealer, to conceal, to cover up. If she called this like a white lightning serum or a white mix it with your foundation cover drop or whatever, I would maybe be into that. But this call a concealer is not a concealer. It does not conceal anything. It actually just blends away into oblivion. It's basically just like, it's like taking some milk and like just spreading it on your face and be like, wow, that looks cool for five seconds. And then boom, 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 blend, 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 gone, gone, gone. It just goes away. It's gone. I love Kat Von D so much that I was like, I'm going to make this work. I'm going to try it a couple times. And I tried it a couple times. And no, it just didn't work. I, I ended up just returning it because I was like this. I try. I gave it my all. I gave it my all. I gave it my all and I could not make it work. I'm so sorry. So I didn't need it, but I bought it, but I returned it. What am I going to say? How do I say this? Don't need it. Not going to rebuy it. Bye! Avroi Katwandi Tattoo Concealer Creme. Quel dommage. I'll put a link for each of these products in which videos I kind of talked about them and or use them. So if you want even more kind of in-depth discussion about each of these products, check the description box down below. Yay! Next up are these. 
These are the Eye Divine eyeshadow palettes from Sleek. Sleek is a British makeup brand. They are kind of like drugstore brand. They're available in the UK at like Superdrug and stuff like that. I initially did like a overseas Sleek order. And then I actually went to the UK a couple years ago and I got to like swatch some more of these palettes in store. Now the two palettes that I initially purchased were like the Vivid Brights, the Bright Mattes, and the kind of Deep Mattes. Just two matte eyeshadow palettes that I thought I can get a lot of use out of as a drag queen that does like a mostly kind of like matte bright I look type deal. A couple things about this. These are really affordable. They're like 10 euros. So that's not that cheap. I mean like 15, 20 bucks maybe US dollars. You get 12 shadows and they're like these these little pans and uh, you know the the Eye Divine line, there's like 22 I think different palettes currently available. And I gotta say, like, I just was not impressed with this formula. I know that bright matte eyeshadows are really difficult to do, but I just have, I have better ones. Kat Von D is so much better. Even, like, some of my e.l.f., like, little palettes and even some Wet n Wild stuff that I have is better than these, and they're more affordable. I just don't think the quality is up to snuff. They are chalky, they're not, I, they might be pigmented, but the formula is so stiff that it's hard to like get enough of the shadow and pigment onto the brush. And then once it's on your eye, blending it is like a nightmare because they're just so stiff and chalky and weird, not like soft and powdery. I, that makes a big difference. Like Kat Von D's shadows are soft and powdery, Sleek's shadows are stiff and chalky. If you know eyeshadows, you know what I'm talking about. I did not care for these. Furthermore, the freaking palettes are so difficult to open. I would like almost like break my nails off just trying to freaking open them. And they're all black. Like you kind of can't see what the insides of them are without looking at like, you know, looking at the bottom or opening them and checking them out. They're just kind of like, I wasn't a fan of the packaging, wasn't a fan of the product. No, 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 thousand times, no. I will say I love Sleek's blush palettes. These are their blush by three trios. This is one in the shade Flame is this trio, but look at this, just gorgeous, super pigmented, super soft blush shades. And for some reason, these powders are a totally different, much more easy to work with formula than the sleek eyeshadows. I don't know why. I don't know what their deal is. Ugh, no, I, I didn't need them. I bought them, but I will never buy them again. The sleek I divine eyeshadow palettes. Ooh, sleek. I almost did an entire video on makeup brushes because there's a lot of like new makeup brush releases. My next anti-haul video might be a brush anti-haul. Let me know if that's something you're interested in. In the meansies, I will include this makeup brush in this anti-haul. This is the e.l.f. Ultimate Kabuki brush. I bought this in an e.l.f. brush haul, which I will link to down below. I love e.l.f. I love their eyes, lips, face. They're an American brand. They're very affordable. The quality is totally hit or miss between products, but I found that some of their brushes I absolutely love. I love their blush brushes. I love their kabuki brushes generally. And so this is, um, this is the, this is an e.l.f. angled kabuki brush. It's a little dirty because I, I used it, but this is great for, it's so huge and it's great for just dusting powder on your face or like brushing off powder like bacon stuff. So I was like, I'm gonna try a couple other kabuki brushes. They also have a smaller face kabuki brush. When I saw this, the e.l.f. Ultimate Kabuki brush, I was like, oh my god, this is just like the Becca One perfecting mega brush that's like 80 bucks or 50 bucks or whatever. And this was only $10, which is steep for e.l.f. Normally the brushes are like $3 or something. So I got it and I was like, okay, it's huge, it's super soft, lovely. Um, it shed so freaking much. The, the hairs were just like, I guess if you want to do like a weird kind of like mohair, like pony face look and you just want to put glitter glue all over your face and then use this brush and just dab it and have the hairs just rip out and stick to your face so you can kind of get like a kind of like horse mane hair kind of beard. That's the only circumstance I could imagine using this. I think it would be the worst makeup brush I've ever used. Like, you know, and I have some Morphe brushes which are also beautiful and kind of cheap and sometimes the ferrule, like the thing pops off and you have to like glue it back and it's annoying, meow, meow, meow. This wasn't that. This was like the bristles were not even, they were like hardly glued in. They just flew everywhere. I found them everywhere. It was like black, little, little black hairs everywhere. Just like ridiculous. Ridiculous, not ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Or, uh, as RuPaul would say, ridiculous. 
It was ridiculous. This it was rid I ah like it made me so mad. In the video, you could watch me down below. Like I'm like I, the it's flying everywhere. I just have to like throw it away. Like it's so look at me. I'm getting anxious. I'm getting all the clamps thinking about it. it. Was so frustrating. Ugh. Elf ultimate kabuki brush. Ultimately, no. I'm not into it. Not uh, never. Will never buy it again. I bought it. I hated it. Don't buy this. Okay, next. So this is the only product that I'm going to talk about that I have purchased and tried that I have not gotten rid of yet. I still have it. This Makeup for Oh, it's upside down. This is one of those Makeup Forever Artist Shadow Palettes. Nine pan palette. I got it on sale. This is the Artist Palette Volume 2. Yeah, I'm not even going to brush it off. It's so shitty. I saw this. I was like, oh my god, I've never tried Makeup Forever shadows. I love the colors. They're so pretty. I've heard great things about their shadows. Oh my god, let me try this. I tried these. I, 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 I'll link to the videos down below where I tried to make this work. No. The... Shadows are like gummy and like gelee, but they're not workable. Like they're patchy, they're gross, they you can't pack them on and get this like kind of amazing color that like you see in the pan, like this pink and whatever. I mean they look okay, but like honestly, I was expecting these to be just like the best eyeshadows I've ever tried. Now, a lot of you have said in the comments below that these nine pan artist palettes are not the same formula as the makeup forever full-sized artist shadows. So so I will. I shall try those. I will never ever purchase another 9-pan palette from Makeup Forever because apparently this formula is different, it's terrible, it's awful. And I've swatched the other ones in store, like the, the Volume 1 I think is like a nude one, 3 is like kind of bloomy, springy one. Again, beautiful shades, but it's the same formula I could feel. They're just like gross, like they're just not, I don't like that formula. I think the they're not workable, they don't work for what I do, and they're on sale all the time and there's a reason why. Like I've always say, do not buy something just because it is on sale. If something is on sale but you've already wanted it or you would purchase it if it was not on sale then you can buy it but if you see something and it's on sale and you're like well I never really was interested in that but you know it's on sale so I might as well try it do not buy it you're not going to have the same appreciation for it you're not going to personally value it the way that you would if you bought it because you really loved it or really wanted it if you're just buying it because it's on sale you're gonna treat it like it's something you just bought because it's on sale and I admit that I kind of just bought this because it was on sale and it freaking sucked and I'm pissed off. <laughs> Did buy it, didn't need it, definitely don't want it, never want it ever again, never want any of them ever again in my world. Sorry about it. Bye, moof. Another really affordable product like the e.l.f. Kabuki brush, this... <laughs> These are the Revlon Ultra HD Matte Lip Colors. I tried this lip out in a video uh, that I did a collaboration with my girl Heather from Ebby Loves Makeup last year. It was a Pantone Color of the Year collaboration, a look, where we used the Pantone Colors of the Year. I'm planning on making a style guide and maybe doing another kind of makeup look for the Color of the Year this year, which is greenery, aka green. It's just green. Let me know if you want to see that, please, because I, I know some people like my style guides and my color of the year videos, and I really love making them, but they're a little bit time consuming, so just let me know if you want to see that, and then I will be happy to make it if you do. But, uh, you know, I tried this out, and I love liquid lipsticks, and I've tried some really good ones. Kat Von D is kind of my favorite formula, although I love the new Kaylin one that I just tried. I love Colored Rain liquid lipsticks. There are a lot of really good formulas out there. I hate to say it, this is not one of them. This is a drugstore liquid lipstick. It, it just does not... I haven't found, like, a really, really good drugstore liquid lipstick. I think maybe the LA Girl ones might be pretty good. I've never tried them, so I can't vouch for that. And they're also kind of hard to find, but these are very easy to find. Unfortunately... If you find them, they will only bring you misery and suffering. They are so bad. I put it on my lip. It was, like, moussey and weird. It never dried down. I, like, got that crazy, like, not even, like, a lip line around the edges of my lip when I was using it. Like, you know when, like, at the ocean, when, like, the, the sea is really briny and full of, like, like, seaweed and crap? And you know when the, like, the, the waves come in? And then they recede, and as they recede, there's, like, foam and, like, crap and seashells and, like, fish poop and shit, like, on the left on the beach and, like, a gross kind of, like, bubbly line. That is what these lipsticks did to my lips. I had, like, a gross, like, it was just, like, a, like, a, a gross, <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it, like, a border 
of sludge around the outside of my lips. The color was, I, it was a really pretty shade that I used. It was like kind of like Marsala, like reddish nude shade. But it was just so sheer. It like blended, like it, it wouldn't like kind of stay. Like I would keep like kind of smoothing it out and like the color would just totally go away. And then it would just ball up on the edges. Like, oh, it was so gross, horrible, horrible, horrible. I was so excited to like find an affordable liquid lipstick formula that I might love. These were not it, just terrible. If a liquid lipstick makes your lips look like the ocean after like an oil spill, like, I, I, I don't know, like, the shit that wa- like, I don't know how else to describe how gross this was. It was so disgusting. I would never ever purchase these again. I know they're tempting, you see them in the drugstore, you're like, oh my god, so affordable, so awesome, like, wow, liquid lipsticks, I've never tried them, you wanna try them, don't try them. Take my word for it, don't try them. Just don't, don't. I didn't need these, I bought them, I'm mad that I bought them, I will never ever buy them again! Sorry, bye Revlon, bye girl. I, I'm, my, I'm getting goosebumps, like, thinking about how bad it, I'm sorry, bye, next, next, bye, go, go. Finally, I don't do this too often, and so when I do it, you know it's serious. I am going to anti-haul an entire brand, and this brand is Black Up. I discovered Black Up because I'd seen some other beauty gurus use Black Up as part of their Black-owned makeup brand challenge tutorial where you use makeup products exclusively from Black-owned makeup brands. Now, over the past like couple months, I've been using a lot of amazing products from black owned makeup brands in my videos and tutorials because I'm super interested in supporting them and I think it's really important to encourage businesses that are traditionally overlooked by the mainstream media. When I've talked about black owned makeup brands before people have been like it's racist to like just buy black owned makeup brands because they're from black people like that's racist or that's reverse racist. Girl, no. Racism is a deeply rooted systemic problem in America. I'm going to be talking about that in a video in my Listen Up series about white privilege that I am really toiling to like get perfect and like have be amazing and please stay tuned and watch that. If you're confused about why I choose to support black owned makeup brands, just wait for that video. It will explain hopefully some things to you and educate you about the reality of the freaking situation that we're living in regardless. I purchased this makeup brand because I had never seen the brand overtly say they were black owned, but they definitely kind of like allowed other people to say that they were. So they were founded by an African makeup artist in France. And they are a makeup brand that caters to women of color, people with deeper skin tones. The products are very well suited to people that have deeper skin tone. I purchased a beautiful like peachy blush and a beautiful matte black eyeliner that I thought was to die for. It was like expensive, it was 19 bucks, but it was fabulous. Beautiful, matte, pigmented, loved it. Then I found out, oh hell no, this is not a black owned makeup brand at all. Not only is it not a black owned makeup brand, it is a makeup brand that was founded by a black person and then passive aggressively horribly and unethically stolen from him. If you want to read the entire story about why Black Up is like a total piece of shit company that not only exploited the trend of like fighting racism systemically by buying makeup from black owned makeup brands, but has like literally, like, like actually oppressed and taken advantage of the original founder of this company and totally, you know, just like shut them out of the, like it was just, it's just a whole, I, I won't go into the entire story. Read the post by Black Vixen Beauty, which I will link down below to hear the entire story. It is so disgusting to capitalize off of the hype of a potentially socially progressive movement. That is so nauseating. It's so infuriating to someone who is very dedicated into actually doing things that help different causes like Black Lives Matter and transgender rights and immigrants' rights and people that like actually need support. When you see someone taking that same rhetoric and turning it into just pure profit without actually benefiting any people of color, especially like the person that created the frickin' brand, ugh, no. I, it's, it's not only like this is just like, oh, it's like they're kind of like bad and like, you know, some of their policies are bad or like, oh, she went on Instagram and like talk shit about someone, so like we should boycott her. No, this is like disgusting, it's racist, it's bullshit. You can watch my haul video in which I 
talk about this brand positively because I thought it was a black owned makeup brand. Girl, do your research. Like I should have done my research more before supporting this brand and I regret that I spent any money on it. I'm happy to say that I returned all of the products that I purchased from this brand. I will never ever purchase from them again. If you're here and you're trying to be a smart consumer and you're with me and we're trying to change the whole freaking world and the way that we buy things, you have to show brands like this that you are not stupid. You're not going to be swept up into like just feeling good about yourself by supporting this black owned makeup brand. No, you're going to freaking learn the backstory of things. You're going to pay attention. You're going to read. You're going to read this blog post. You're going to see the reality of their ways and you're not going to let shit like this slide. Shame on you. I, I I don't know what else to say. Shame on you, Black Up. So disgusting. And, you know, a, a lot of you may already know this story. A lot of you shared it with me as I was, you know, when I posted that video. So thank you so much for helping educate me about these things. And I am just trying to pay it forward and educate you. Do not support Black Up. They are not a Black-owned makeup brand. And I think it's just like disgusting business practices and human practices. Unethical, insulting, racist, and infuriating. Bye, Black Up, bye. That was my 11th anti-haul. Thank you so much for watching. Girl, if you've had similar experiences with these products, let me know down below. If you've had opposite experiences with these products, also let me know. Like, let me know if you do find ways for these things to work. Do not try to justify why supporting Black Up is a good thing. I'm not here for that conversation. No, no. Because I don't want you to be like, no, 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 even if it, though it's not Black owned, there's still, like, no, come on. The, read the article before you try to defend them. It's all I gotta say. It's all I gotta say. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Please, if you have the resources, donate money to me on Patreon. Thank you so much to everyone that is supporting me on Patreon. You are making these videos possible, baby. It's all because of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you. And you. And you. Yay. I'm Kimberly Clark. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.